Hey guys, just a quick video to show you the upgrades that I made on my 2020 Rally Talus 2. I've upgraded the fork, the brakes, and the drivetrain. Alright, first up is the fork. I replaced the Suntour coil fork with this Manitou Mark IV. This is a 27 and a half inch tire fork. It ships with 100 millimeters of travel, but can easily be converted to 120 millimeters of travel by simply removing one of the internal spacers, which I went ahead and did. Uh, this is the quick release version. This has the quick lever damper, so it's just either an open or a locked position. There's really no other adjustment to it. It does have a rebound adjustment on the bottom, which I haven't really played around with too much. I just kind of left it in the middle setting. This is also a one and one eighth inch stirrer tube. I believe you can also get this fork in a tapered stirrer tube as well. But this is kind of a budget fork. This usually sells for about the $225 range. It has the reverse arch. But this fork really gets great reviews for the money. So I thought it would be a pretty inexpensive and easy upgrade. Okay, next up is the drivetrain. So this bike shipped with a Torney 3x7 drivetrain, which I replaced with a Shimano M5100 1x11 drivetrain. So this is the M5100 crank set. I opted for a 32 tooth ring gear. I also installed a Saint lower bottom bracket, as you can see there, the gold anodized. Uh, this has an 11 by 51 tooth cassette and the same uh, Diore M5100 rear derailleur, which also has a clutch right here. So this is off and on. And it also comes with a 11 speed shifter. And this one shipped with the uh, optic gear indicator, but um, there's no numbers on here, so it doesn't really do you a whole lot of good. You just basically shift as you need to shift. I don't really worry about what gear I'm in. Um, this actually mounted up pretty easily. I did have to modify my chain, my chain line. So this crank set is set for a 52 millimeter chain line. Now I just have an older. Well, this isn't an older bike, but it's older technology. It has 135 millimeter dropout axle. So this is non-boost and it's not even the, the newer 142 millimeter standard. But um, my bike is a small frame and my chain stay is only 425 millimeters. So that really makes for very steep chain line angles um, with that 52 millimeter. So I went ahead and and use spacers so I used uh, four and a half millimeters worth of spacers here I've got one nylon spacer and one metal washer so that brought my chain line into 47.5 millimeters and right now it's set up perfectly uh, it shifts great um, I can go into my 51 tooth gear or cog and back pedal without dropping the chain down I know that's been a problem um, in the past with some other other drivetrains I'd say the only issue I had was with this was the shifter. So I did have some problems shifting it. I had the 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 limit screws, my high low and uh, B screw all adjusted properly, but I was having some issues uh, with the shifter in the middle in the middle cogs. And I think what the problem was was that I was still using my original cable housing, and I think maybe there was too much friction in there because maybe it was just a, a lower end cable housing. So I went to REI and got some Shimano cable housing. And originally this was routed down the down tube and underneath the bottom bracket along here. And I decided to reroute it to give it a little bit more direct route uh, along the top tube. And now it seems to be working great. So I really love this drivetrain. It shifts great. I love having a one by the one by 11 uh, just makes things a lot easier and being able to get rid of that front derailleur was a blessing. Okay, next up are the brakes. So this bike shipped with some Tektro mechanical disc brakes 
and they worked okay. They they squealed, um, but I decided to go ahead and upgrade to hydraulic brakes. Now these are Shimano M395s, uh, pretty basic entry level. I guess you can probably compare them to the Shimano 201, uh, which are really popular. So this this might be a little bit better brake. I don't know. It's a little higher number, um, but it's pretty basic. The only adjustment you have here is a reach adjustment screw. Uh, it has the cap for the bleeder uh, funnel. And I bought these on eBay. They came pre-bled and, and mounted to the hoses and they were actually perfect length. So my front one is a perfect length. Here's the caliper. Now one great thing about these brakes was that I had the option of adding rotors and I just for like an extra five dollars and I selected uh, some basic Shimano's, I think they're RT56's, and actually what they sent me were these Ice Tech rotors, and these are just working great, they're quiet, um, really, really a, a great upgrade, so I'd say if you do have mechanical disc brakes on your bike, I'd say, man, it's really worth the extra 60 or $70 that you would spend uh, to put some hydraulic brakes on. So this is a huge, huge improvement. Um, the only thing was with these, I know there were some different options as far as left and right handles. So the only ones that they had left in stock, well, they were white. So that wasn't my first option, but I don't think they look too bad. And uh, this one on the left side actually operates the rear brake and the right side operates the front brake. So that's reverse of what I had before. I think that's uh, pretty common in Europe though, and it's set up like a motorcycle. So I'm just getting used to that. I'll just have to make sure that any other brakes or that I have on other bikes are set up the same so I don't I don't forget my left and right. But uh, definitely a huge upgrade. I definitely recommend it. So on that point, uh, that's about it. So what did I save in weight? Well, this bike originally in its stock configuration weighed about 34 34 and a half pounds. So on the heavy side, it's a small frame, 27 and a half inch tires and wheels. Um, but now I've got it down to 30 pounds. It, it might actually be 29 and a half. So my scale, I'm just, I'm just using a bathroom scale and it uh, does half pound increments. So sometimes I'm 29 and a half and sometimes I'm 30 with it. But um, yeah, so I shed at least four pounds off of it, which is great. Now, you know, I had it to spend some money to do that, but I think it's well worth it. I, I think what I'm going to do is uh, maybe start looking at full suspension bikes as well, and I could always take off some of these components, a drivetrain, and put that onto a, a different frame if I want to. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks.